Check out Bounce Pickleball, the future of indoor pickleball in Malvern, PA, on the Philadelphia Main Line. There are 14 dedicated indoor pickleball courts, great lighting, high ceilings, and full locker rooms. Tell me a little bit about it. When did this all start? How did this come together? Well, we, um, I mean, the project's been in works for about two years or so. Two years, wow. Yeah, I mean, that's that's kind of where it started. It started with a little pickleball club that me and my brother did, the responsible taking one that you know, right. everybody kind of knows. And yeah. it kind of built from there, and we had so much fun with that that, you know, and decided this is be a good way to do it. Uh, Plymar, right? That, uh, we, it works out of Plymar, it works out of Green Valley, yeah, it works out of every, any place where we can play pickleball. Right, right. So just like everyone else, we were just looking for places to play pickleball and, and decided to try to do something to consolidate that and make sure everybody has a pick place to play. Uh -huh. um, really with the with the right play conditions. So like you were saying with the colors, we want to make sure that you can see the ball and we did all kinds of fun things to the paint to make sure that the ball would glow across it and uh -huh. we made sure that the backgrounds were right and that the spacing is good. So we spent a lot of time working on details just to make sure that we really created the right kind of play conditions and then we're gonna just try to combine that with the right kind of people and uh, we should we, we should have a pretty yeah. fun uh, winter. Color, that's very interesting. I don't think too, pe too many people um, worry about color enough. Uh, I've seen indoor facilities with white walls and you just lose the ball, you know, in, in, sh in uh, shots. Uh, and then you have a very interesting color scheme on the court uh, that I've never seen either. Uh, describe the thought process there. So we we took contrast. Yeah, all contrast. It, it all comes about. It, it's all about ball contrast. Like, right. and we did different things with our our paint combos too. So we took out some of the white. We put in a little black. We made sure that you know, no matter whether you're in the transition zone, the kitchen, um, out of bounds, you can see that ball no matter what, and it looks big. And that's important for high level players, and it's important for people with aging eyes. Right. Uh, there's all kinds of reasons, but the better the better that the uh, contrast is on the from your court, and then you know as long as you have lighting to match, which we do, um, you know you, you can see that ball just about anywhere, and that that's the key to play good pickleball, or really just to play any pickleball. You got to right. see the ball. You got to see the ball. You got to right. see the ball. Right, right. Uh, the uh, is some of the contrast between the white line and the surface for an out call. Or is it more than just that? It's more than that. Um, you know, you're, the ball's moving fastest through these transition zones. Um, so that's why people play with the kitchen colors. Now, our kitchens are different colors. Right. It's just very slight. So it's a slight difference because that really is the best contrast that, you know, we could, we could produce um, along with the black backgrounds. The black backgrounds really help the ball pop in the air. Uh -huh. And then, you know, so that's... That, that's pretty much the, the science behind it is, is you take a color wheel and you look at the exact opposite of what your ball is and you try to get there. Right, and, uh, right. That's, that, that, was the, uh, that was the goal and, and I think we really hit that. Um, you know, we had a, with this summer and the humidity and stuff, you know, we had, uh, it, was, it was work trying to get paint to dry, <laughs> dry so we slowed down the opening a little bit and things like that. Oh, okay. But, um, you know, we're, we're, and we're still working through creating the best core conditions we can. You know, we, you got to be in it, you got to play on it a little bit, you got to find the, you know, any soft spots or anything like that. So we're, we're working on that, but, you know, we are, we're very, very happy with our color scheme. Uh, it's really, it's, it's really, the feedback has been fantastic. So that's what we were looking for. 
Tell me the relationship with Yola. Um, Eric White, he's their national, I don't know if you guys know, Eric's been, there. Eric's been around forever. Right. He's from Maryland, he's everywhere. Yeah. But he's their national uh, partnership rep. And, you know, we became good friends. And uh, Gordon from uh, Yola, the CMO, he, he's just been so supportive. He designed up some of our paddles for us. Um, he, they, they were, they, they just been an amazing partner. Right. You know, they have a, they have an amazing staff of engineers working on paddles. They have the best players in the, in the, uh, in the game right now. Um, and they're really a, a forward thinking company. And that's why we chose them as our primary sponsor. And, uh, Yola made you a custom paddle. Yeah. Then we, we have our kids, our, we have a kids custom, uh, performance paddle. And then we have our, our 16 millimeter and 14 millimeters, uh, Senecas, which you know, we use those for corporate events, and actually people after the corporate events want to buy them. They like them so much. They're a great paddle. So, you know, whether you're looking for rec paddles or high-end paddles, Yola really covers it. Uh -huh. And um, the way that they, from everything from their social media to the way that they research materials to just the, the way that the pros, everything about the company and what they do is what we like here at Guns. What, um, besides, uh, what is their involvement in the club? What is it, are they just a main sponsor? Or what, what's well, the relationship? We're a facility sponsor, so okay. we we support them as far as you know. That's what we stock our pro shop with. Uh, that's what our pros play with. That's what you know. That's kind of I don't want to say that's what we push, but that's the product we believe in. And then in turn, we help push their events. Okay. Um, they are going to provide us pro support. You know, Eric's going to be coming up here. He's going to take some of the other pros, bring them up here. Uh, so one of the biggest things about Bounce is, is the educational component. Right. We, Let's talk about some of the pros. Who, who do you have involved? Uh, Richard Betterbees. Yep. Um, major player. Major player. He's doing fantastic all over. Yeah. Uh, Just won he, the, <laughs> one of the PGA events. He, he's, been, he's been out there winning and competing. He was out in London. So it's been really fun watching him develop. Uh, Steve Hendricks. Okay. Uh, who's Steve? Yeah, Steve's, you know. Probably one of the most liked uh, <laughs> local players, players out there. Right. Really. Nobody can say a bad thing. Nice guy. guy. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So um, chill. He's so chill. He really is. <laughs> um, and then Hannah uh, Newsom, she's great. She's right. really developed such a fantastic um, group of you know people that come and take lessons from her. She she's really a big part of uh, what we're doing around here. And then we have Tyler Tolson. Uh, who is he's he's been great he's doing a lot of individuals for us and he's just a he's a great pickleball player a great guy and that combination has been fantastic morgan evans is in here all the time okay. uh, we've contracted morgan to really help us create a, a stronger and a more robust teaching community so he spends time with our pros he spent times with our you know with our members so um, you can book lessons with him but you know nice. uh, one of the one of the best parts about having morgan in is you know he's the gm of a of an mlp team he's a professional player he's been a professional coach for so long um he's been a game changer and he's making our staff better and nice. that is been it's really fun to watch i see him partnering with a bunch of people in yeah. local tournaments he does and that's right. that's the neat part of you know about morgan is, is there's no ego with it he just jumps in those tournaments and right. plays with anybody and, and, and he just it's a great experience for them he he seems to love it so people can book uh lessons or a clinic uh, sign up for clinics we can he can book events. lessons he we, we do clinics we do lessons we do round robins uh you know with with it being august open you know indoor open play groups aren't amazingly robust right um, right now but that's you know that's that's expected so sure. uh i also want to mention uh i noticed brady's doing this kids program yes which is very good bring up the young young absolutely. folks absolutely. so he's involved who else is involved uh, helping out oh we have lit uh, right. Lindsay taff um bennett matthew he's down on our door helping us out sue Hughes is working uh to put together some women's group for us um, Julie Kessler is doing some oh, Julian, yeah, here. Yeah. She's doing a great job with some uh, doing some clinic work. Jen Wang is doing fantastic, and uh, really at the top of the list, uh, the two people at the top of the list is you know my brother Chris has been helpful on the backside with especially with the yoga stuff, and okay. he's been he's been super helpful getting things up. And then um, you know Brady Keith is kind of our 
he's our he's our mouthpiece and he okay. does so much for us on social media and answering emails and you know he's just Braden is yeah. Braden is all things Philadelphia pickleball and he's all right. things bounce like he's he's a He's, he's he's been fantastic. Yeah, the so, three of you have been together for quite a few years. Yeah, yeah, it's exactly. been a, and, and Braden really he's come on over the last couple of months since we since we acquired the facility, um, and and got this ramped up. He's just been a huge part of the opening and everything else. So I can't I can't say enough good things about all of Braden's work and right. his input into things. Been I have awesome. a funny story. My sister's sister in law used to teach tennis here. And she was so surprised. She said, Nick, you can't believe it. They bought, uh, you know, the tennis facility here. What was it called? Great Valley? Great Valley, right. Yeah. Uh, uh, somebody, she calls me, somebody bought Great Valley tennis and turned it into pickleball. No, no. <laughs> that was the hardest part of this whole project because you never want to see four tennis courts come offline. You right. know what I mean? People, right. people right. love this place. and But you know what? The membership has been great. Uh, um, so many people actually kept their contracts, just switched them to pickleball. Oh wow! So that was a great surprise, um, um, and they just the whole membership has been really they've been welcoming. Um, did you think at any point to do dual purpose uh, tennis and pickleball? We were I thinking it's about I know splitting it's tough. it. There's no good easy answer to it. Well, it did you contemplate it? We did. Okay. Um, the problem is, is we wouldn't have enough indoor courts to really move the needle in the winter. Right. Um, and then with two tennis courts, it's kind of hard to build any type of real tennis program with only two courts. Got it. So it was kind of an all or nothing. I would have loved to keep tennis. It does a lot of things. Having tennis, it just gives you gives you more racket exposure. Sure. So being a place where you could play tennis and pickleball would be fantastic. Right. Um, but this facility really only allowed itself to be one or the other. Got it. Um, now your layout. I'm sure you try, You played with lots of different <laughs> layouts. Lots this layouts. is the most interesting option that I've seen. Uh, what made you solidify or decide on the three and the four structure? Well, one is we wanted to make sure we had enough courts for the winter. Okay. So really our minimum number we could do was 12. Okay. Um, we wanted to do 16. Right, well, which would have been fantastic. A little tight. But it would have created, look, very playable conditions. Our back four courts are amazingly playable. Okay. Those are designed specifically to teach. Um, they're, in, they're kind of like in garages of two, so there's two courts, right. and we have 14 nice feet space. in between, Another and then two courts here. And that's really designed so the instructor, if they have two, uh, they, have, they have two courts. They're able to kind of be in the right proximity. They don't have to yell. Um, where if you look at our, our three premium courts, they're really far apart. We're talking 14 feet. So that doesn't right. make yeah, you even have a walkway. You have and there's a room you have a walk and put in even more. Yeah, there's yeah. A, those are really designed for premium play, where players that play aggressive pickleball and they want to run and they want to have the space to, for... I don't want to say they're trick shots, but you know what? To, to play high level pickleball, you got to right. move. Right. And these courts will allow you to do that. Um, we wanted to make sure our center courts were true 64 um, by 32s. Okay. So we wanted to make sure that we had enough room for any pickleball player to come in here and really enjoy playing. Right. Um, so, you know, we have 10 feet behind the baselines on our center courts, and 9 feet on the premiums, and then plenty of room on the other. But we wanted to make sure that we could really host a, a high level game and have any pickleball player come in here and feel like they can play the, their best pickleball. With the walkway, you have 34? Or are you, yeah. you would restructure it? For we, can set, we can set it however we want. Right now, we're, uh, right now, we're eight feet on each side. So yeah, we're, right. we're in a full, I mean, it's still pretty wide. Right. right. They were pretty wide. Now those barriers move, so I couldn't right. tell you exactly what they are this second. Sure. Um, we're, we've been playing with, we need a four foot walkway, a five foot walkway. And I, uh, you decided on a wall to separate them instead of a fence. That's interesting. Yeah. Well, so the uh, fence. And black, which is great. That's why we did it. Yep. Okay. Um, we didn't, you know, when you have, when you're able to see everybody on the other side, yep. you're, you're again, you're, you're not talking about ideal play conditions. Right. Um, we wanted something that was strong, like net, netting, you know, 
I was very surprised about how dangerous netting is. I didn't right. I did, I, and I walked well, over. Sure. Well, they can't, you can't, apparently you catch your foot, twist your knee, True. and fall over. True. I was unaware of that. That wasn't something I we really planned on netting until we looked at like the insurance. And we all play that with tennis courts. You know, mm-hmm. they keep the tennis court net up all the time. Yeah. And I never really watched or seen anybody fall, and I always thought it was kind of silly. And then I actually watched somebody catch their foot. Right. And I was like, I guess that's what they're talking about. Yep. Uh, so yeah, and that was that was a bad day for that guy's knee. Um, but we again, we wanted to make sure we had a really open feel. I didn't want to feel like batting cages where everybody's kind of like isolated in there. Right. And it is open. You know, exactly. that's, that's what we wanted. We wanted that open feel where you really feel like you can you you can play the type of ball you want to play. And not everybody needs giant courts. You know, it was one of the neat things that we figured out was, you know, if you don't want to run around chase balls, I mean, for 95% of play, you know, the, the, the normal court size is okay. Uh, you know, we have plenty of room back and forth. A lot of facilities are very tight to the wall, so you're hitting your paddle, you're running yeah. into them. We don't have to worry about that here. Right. Um, lighting. Fabulous lighting. The ceiling is nice and bright. Yes. Did, did you, uh, was the ceiling, because it looks like it's a great shape. We got very lucky that they replaced the ceiling uh, a year ago or two years nice. ago. Nice. So the ceiling and the reflective ceiling is new. Um, you know, we've been light tested and we've addressed every dark area. So the entire edge to edge of this facility is approximately 600 lumens. Wow. Um, so that's, that's kind of what we were working for um, was getting the side lighting right, making sure that we have, you know, our primary lighting was good. And um, when you switch a tennis facility to a pickleball facility, the lighting, um, the lighting is set for tennis, not pickleball. So, right. you know, we had to do some adjustments and things like that, but it's been, uh, it's been great. Yeah. Uh, no air conditioning, but you have fans, oh, yeah. and then you have heating, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah this is an indoor facility, so, you know, we're looking you into You know, it's the pretty hot out today, and it's very comfortable. It's great, you know, the first week or two where the paint, where the courts were drying, and um, we had the most humid days probably in the history of July. July. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, was, it was an aggressive July. So. for the planet, I think. I yeah, remember. exactly. So it was, it was a little, it was very aggressive uh, in here in July as, as we were putting the paint down and all right. that water was evaporating. Right. Um, but now, even on the 90, 95 degree days, it's pretty nice. Okay. So it's, uh, you know, it can get a little hot, but for the most part, uh, now that the paint is, is all cured, we're, we don't have that additional water coming into the uh, into the air, you know, it's been fantastic. So how do the memberships work? Describe the memberships that are available. The two primary memberships we have is the open play membership, which okay. allows you to schedule seven days out. Okay. Um, and you can rent the courts the day out. If they're available, you're welcome to rent them. Okay. Uh, that membership's only 125 um, uh, a year. That's very reasonable. And then you pay very reasonable. Yeah, you know, we try to keep that down because for people who are just doing open play, right. don't need court rentals. We right. didn't want to overcharge them for that. Right. And then they pay twelve dollars per time that you play. And then we um, twelve dollars. Mm-hmm. That's good per hour. hour. We're, we're we're gonna we're gonna uh, for the two hour session. Oh, so, for the, so, so if you do an ocean so. play, it's a, it's a uh, two hour, twelve dollars. That's um, great. Yeah, we're trying to we're we're doing what we can to keep those prices low. You know, everything's going up, but we're we're doing what we can to, right. to stay competitive. And then um, the general membership is two twenty five a year. That allows you to schedule uh, fourteen days out. Okay. So if you need a little bit more stability in your play schedule, want to make sure you get in the, the groups that you want to be in. You can schedule your play 14 days out, okay, and uh, then you can rent courts two weeks in, in advance as well, and that's still twelve dollars uh, so, uh, for for the for open play. play. What's the court rental? Uh, Forty per hour. Forty per hour for, for the, the court. court for the court. Right. Ride it out. Yep. Right. Um, and any other memberships or it's just? Uh, we have the founders membership, which is the uh, that's the thirty thirty four fifty, right. and that is basically unlimited pickleball. Okay. So if you if you don't want to worry about it and you just want to come and play do your open plays and you get some court rentals with that you can schedule 21 days out uh, instead of the 14 and then you can also uh, when we have you know we'll have some pretty fun events in here you you'll have guaranteed a, a you know entry to some of our 
some of our fun events that we're going to be hosting here in the fall and winter. Let's talk about the events. What, I, I saw a uh, minor league pickleball coming up. We have a minor league pick. Yep, we have yeah. minor league pickleball coming up August twentieth. Yeah, we're going right. Away. Yeah, no, it's it's. I'm actually going to play in it. So okay. we're, we're we're going to make a team and we're going to we're going to have fun with it. I'm, right. I'm really excited for this format. Um, yeah, I, I think that. You know, I think a lot of a Dude, lot 16, of, 18, 20, where are you going? We have a 16, 18, and 20 division. Right. The right. 18 division is almost full. The 20 division, I think we still need two teams. And um, I'm not, we're, it's Steve Conger from All State Pickleball. He's the MLP guy, so M I L P. M I L P. So he's, he's taking, he's, he's kind of running the point on that. Uh, we just sent it out to our membership, so I'm sure we'll get a couple more. So that'll be fun. Um, and then we're looking for that second week in September, we're gonna do uh, like a season opener. Okay. We haven't figured out, we're, we're gonna release that in our next email. And so that'll be a big event coming up where we're kinda, our, we, we opened, we did a nice soft opening in the summer, um, had some people in, but really, you know, our, our season and, and we wanna have a fun little event that will create some momentum to bring us to uh, through December here. And, and the, and the fun part of indoor pickleball, you know, when, when it's too right now, it's beautiful out, so. Right, right. <laughs> uh, I heard there's something coming up in November. Oh, the bounce, <laughs> right. We got our bounce opening coming up. That's going to be fun. Right. That's right. So I was chronologically going to. Okay, so yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm really looking forward to Do you have anything in October? What? I'm not, not on the right. books, no. We're, we're, we may do another type of MIP event. Um, sure. But really, we wanted the bounce open to be the first event that we run here, big okay. tournament. Um, nice. I know you've run a lot of tournaments, so I figured that would be nice and smooth. Yep. Um, so we we're, we got a lot to fit. You know, we we've never no, we've never run a pinball tournament here. So, um, are you getting approached by businesses to do sort of like social events? Oh yeah, we we probably do two a week right now, three a week. Very cool. You know, we it's it's. Everything from our, our Amazon ring, we're, we're in a pretty neat area for that. Okay. Um, you know, we've, we've talked to Vanguard, uh, the Amazon ring has done some really fun events. Uh, Chris Lally's awesome. helping us out with that and just doing it, creating an amazing experience for, for our, uh, our corporate, uh, for the corporate events. So we've had a couple, bunch of CPAs in here doing some stuff, Rendezvous Capital. Um, we have an event actually tomorrow with uh, with one of the local CPA groups, uh, so it's right. it's been fun. So they bring people in. They do. You supply the paddles. We do everything. So right. they just have to show up. Uh, everybody wants something a little different. What we found works the best is coming in, doing a thirty minute uh, lesson okay. or a thirty minute clinic, and right. then we do a, a like a, a luck of the draw or a round robin for right. you know the next ninety minutes. So right. it's been fun. And people have a blast. Oh, sure. they've been having a great time. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Do you have to be a member or can you just rent a court without, can you walk in, not walk in, but can you call up and just rent a court without any type of membership? No. Okay, so you, you have to buy the minimum you membership. You do have to have a membership. Um, and the reason we, you know, the reason we do that is, you know, in the summertime we can be, we can be nice and relaxed. We got plenty of courts, but the, the focus for us is our membership. Okay. And we want to make sure that when it gets busy, that our members have a place to play. Okay. Um, we'd love for them to have guests when it's when we have the space, but the focus is on creating the experience and creating the um, the play groups for our members. Um, and then hopefully, you know, if you bring somebody as a guest, they want to join because it's you know the right play conditions and the right people. Okay, so members can bring guests. You certain events you can have guests, okay. uh, especially in the summertime. Uh, we pretty much keep that guest functionality on all the time. Um, we're gonna we're gonna have to play it by year. We have a twenty committee. All be a guest so many times. That's what we're. Well, it's a three. We have a, everybody can only be a guest three times. Okay. Um, and then you you switch over. That's how we kind of keep that. So there will be a lot of events that will not you won't be able to come as a guest, but we will definitely have events where you can. Like the MLP, MILP is a great example. It's an outside thing. You can come and play to play the bounce open. You don't have to be a member. Right. Uh, so there's lots of ways to play here if you chose not to be a member. But we make it very, very easy to play if you are a member. Okay. Um, 
Uh, locker rooms? What do you have any? any we have full room? locker rooms. We nice. have full showers. Uh, uh, very nice. Yeah, we have we have everything. We even have a little. You don't get that in the public parks. Yeah, yeah. No, we got we got showers. Where we're, usually, where we're usually flat. Yep. We got a beautiful mezzanine, uh, yeah. so it's easy to see, um, and it's you know this mezzanine is, is built to last. It's you know so yeah, it's solid. Yeah. It's it's nice and solid. So you know great view of the yeah, it's fun. You can really see the premium ports well. Right. Um, we'll have cameras. Um, we have cameras on the back eight. Okay. And we'll throw up a TV or two so people can kind of check those out. Oh, nice. Mm -hmm. Nice. So we uh, uh, you know, right. They all go to this TV right now. But we can, uh, when we set up your headquarters, we'll make sure you're able to see all the courts. Uh, any food or drinks? Or just vending machines? What? So we have two vending machines, um, and then you know, for the tournaments and stuff like that, we have a, a couple of catering companies that we we partner with. That right. We are, um, you know, look probably we'll have in. But um, the big thing for, especially for me, to be honest, I, I'm trying to focus on the pickleball aspects. And if somebody wants to come in and do food, great. But right. my job is to make sure that we have really nice pickleball courts. Right. So that's what that's what I've been doing. Okay. Hey, thanks. Thank you, Nick.